Alrighty. Yeah, this is the new live stream oh. stuff. Welcome to Ice Coach Online Live. Joining us today is the beautiful Anastasia, as always, and we have the man, the Canadian legend, Dylan Moscovich. <laughs> now, for anyone who is wondering who Dylan Moscovich is, he is a Canadian pair skater, as I already said, and he's an Olympic medalist, and he's been world and Europeans for so many years, and he is the man who has one of the coolest signature moves ever on the ice. And this is him doing it. We call him, what do we call him? The world's strongest world's man, strongest. the world's strongest quadricep with a blade attached to his foot. Like yes, yeah. This is Dylan. Yeah. Scientifically there you go, <laughs> scientifically proven. This is Dylan at four <laughs> minutes into his long program in the Cana uh, Canadian World Championship. He's in Canada, right? Yeah. World Figure Skating Championship yes. Canada yeah. 2013. And that is the crowd going wild as they can't believe that he has the guts to drop down onto one knee just prove how much of a man he is by lifting that girl over his head, spinning her around in all sorts of positions. They erupt. So, well, you know, when you're wearing sparkles and flowing shirts, you got to show how manly you are as much as you can. I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. You, you really were the sparkle in that video. You know, oh, and you kind you. of like that. That I tried my best. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have liked to do that myself, but. My legs definitely would have said no, and I probably would have just had my partner come down on my face, and then I would have, you know, tail between the legs, sort of just scooted her off onto the ice, and I sort of took my well, bow. Well, you, you probably would have made a top ten on some sports center for sure. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm maybe thinking, it would have been worth a try. 10, I'm thinking uh, Fail Army. Fail Army would fail probably what fail I mean. Army. Go ahead, you'd be on like people are amazing. I'd have done the Fail Army version, you know. Could mm. I have a There's no bad press, press, as they say, yeah, right? There we go. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, so that is Dylan's signature move, and in my opinion, uh, an incredible signature move. My thigh, amazing. my thighs are tied just watching that, Dylan. Um, Thank you. Well, it's so, been a bit. It's been a while since I've done that. So you know, I, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of PTSD of that uh, thigh burn, <laughs> the, like lava in my left thigh. Yeah, like, like healing at the end. You feel of the like program. doing it again now. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. Um, Such a good lift, though. Yeah, great lift. So I also know <laughs> Dil Dylan's quite a character as well. And um, when I was getting Dylan on the show, I thought, right, let's um, let's see. Do I have any pictures with Dylan? And I came across a pretty good one. And I'm going to show you this. I sent this to Dylan earlier. So here we all are. I'm nervous. <laughs> Jeremy Abbott, <laughs> Fabian, Tess, um, Scott Moyer, picture. Patrick Chan, Eric Radford doing an impression of Sweet. Ben Stiller from Zoolander. That's his yes. blue steel look. And down here, well, of course. here is Dylan. It's really, really closely. ridiculously good looking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I actually think, Dylan, there's me and you. And I don't know what I'm doing, but you are definitely upstaging um, Eric Radford in this one. That yes. is a much better blue steel. You know, we have, a very, we have a very tight, competitive friendship, you know? Yeah. Our, our skating careers, we rivaled each other the whole way through, so it yeah. kind of happens off the ice, too. Yeah, you he does blue steel, i got to do a better blue steel. Exactly, and I, I go with your blue steel on that one, Dylan. That was, that was as impressive as the knee. Uh, I'll make sure to brag to him about it. Yeah, you tell him, you tell him, Lloyd said... You beat him in that blue steel face, all right? I will. I'm going to tweet about it. Yeah, tag him nice. Out. I like that. And finally, for anyone watching and also wondering, see, Dylan's talents go further than just the ice. He's also yes, a actor and a model, and he has been in everybody's favorite. No, that's the wrong one. Whoops. <laughs> Spinning <laughs> out, out the Netflix drama where a young girl struggles to cope with um, her competitive skating career, her mental health uh, condition she's going through, and also a town that seems to have a problem with drinking too much whiskey. And maybe that's a Canadian <laughs> thing. Maybe Dylan can uh, shed some light on that. But <laughs> certainly, we enjoyed the show. We and... loved it. It was yeah. so good. We it, were you know, it was it was so much fun to be uh, to take part in it. Um, I was. Really lucky, uh, Sarah Kawahara, a very well-known choreographer. She was the skating director for the show, and she um, she contacted me uh, maybe September, and filming started at the end of January. So I actually started as a consultant and started coaching some of the actors on the ice to help them get ready to skate. Oh, nice. uh, the main guy, um, he... He was a hockey player, so he could skate. So we worked on him, like trying to make him look like a figure skater uh, for certain yeah. moments. And then while I was there, I got asked to be the stunt double for him for the first half of the, the season. Nice. And then they gave me a role as a coach. So it was kind of like, 
yeah. you know, just all worked out the right way. Yeah. I mean, I remember um, but it, yeah, it was such a blast. It was so interesting learning how complicated, like skating is a complicated sport yeah. yes, to try is. and capture it and, and, you know, like get its essence and make it yeah. Hollywoodized a bit, you know, the cinematography, like show the drama of the tricks and, and the drama. Yeah. Absolutely. It was, uh, the problem solving was fantastic to watch. Yeah. yeah it was very well done. I remember it, it shows some close ups and you'd see, you know, you'd see, that is this Justin was his name, right? The character. I, mm. I'm not sure what the actor's yeah. name is, but he'd be there, and you know, you could tell he didn't have the ballet training and things like this. But you know, maybe people who aren't a specialist wouldn't realise this. But then it'd cut away, and there we'd have Dylan off doing some thundering crossovers and a double or triple twist <laughs> or whatever. And you'd be like, oh, okay, okay, I'm not pretty sure that's a stunt double at this point. But yeah, yeah, so yeah really. But yeah, good show. We enjoyed it, it was, and it was good. yeah. Unfortunately, we're never going to know um, how they're going to cope with liver damage after all the whiskey. So, right, right. I yeah. love that they yeah. always And if they were able like... to fight through that long program. Yeah, Honestly, exactly. I mean, they would be taking like four shots after training. And I'm like, I don't think I ever took I like any the, shot after training. I like, like the ball you, of you, on myself, Dylan. Stasia, Stasia, you just don't remember because you probably took four shots. After <laughs> exactly. <after> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Let's be real. But let's be honest, if they were doing that... They'd probably look, and this is the picture of me and you, Dylan. Uh, they would probably look like this if they were really doing those shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair, fair I guess they just can handle it better than we can because, as you say, they have a lot of practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, for everyone watching, please uh, smash up the likes on the video and start typing your comments, and we will start answering them as you type them. And I see mm -hmm. there is already a comment that I'm going to send your way, Dylan. I'm going to send you your first yep. curveball, okay? Do you think changing the age for singles will happen in the future? I'm super curious on your opinion. Changing the age. I guess I think oh. it means with the for the ladies, right? Mm. For the young kids yeah. doing quadruple this, that, and the other at 13 years old. I'm kind of I'm yeah. kind of in the the middle in terms of what I think will happen. I don't think I would be shocked with either outcome if they were to change it. Mm -hmm. I can see a lot of debates. I think we'll have to see how this kind of trend evolves and how long it stretches or if it's you know a phenomena that just kind of happened yeah and you know there's these three young girls with a couple behind them doing all these quads and then no one can do that ever again or yes. it's less people but yeah. it looks like the trend is growing so i i'm sure there's going to be conversations and hopefully the powers that be make the choice that's right for the safety of everybody and for the good of the sport yeah i think mm -hmm. it's a very complicated decision to make and i'm not going to tell them how to do it because i don't know enough. <laughs> of course well here i'm gonna i'm gonna really put you on the spot here dylan and um, i'm gonna say what did you think when you saw well I've, maybe you haven't seen i'm assuming you have seen um there's this kid who is trained by evgeny Pashenko. Mm. And it said 11 years old, off ice, triple axle, quad salco. It's like 11 years old. Mm -hmm. What went through your yeah. mind when you saw that? I'm numb. I'm numb. Like nothing. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't even know if any of this is real. Yeah. You know, like my it's brain kind of like... can't compute it. So I kind of just like laugh at it. Like, you know, Cause I'm it, getting, like, you know in the... like I'm getting punked every other day. <laughs> with a yeah, but in my head, I was thinking, in my head, I was thinking, you know, is this poor kid gonna be in like a wheelchair when she's 15 you, mm. you know what i mean like it's yeah. a bit it's almost it's, like the new you know what? norm almost They're it is but it. also if you look at it i mean the technique has has just evolved so much it has. and yeah. it's repeatable mm -hmm. and when they fall on the quads they're not falling that hard so i mean the way i look at it is that the wear and tear on their body, it's a quad, it's much more. They're small. They're generally not fighting for landings because they're not strong enough to really hang on to, you know, four rotations mm -hmm. and being outside the circle. Yeah. So when they're landing, they're pretty much like bang over their foot. So yeah. their biomechanics are going to save them a bit, I think. And and uh, I think you're going to see some people genetically are just more durable. And yeah. they just happen to, you know, they can, in, they can just go through that and other people they may have incredible skill and their body just doesn't have that longevity it's, be, i mean i th it's a roll of you, the dice would you be more concerned right watching someone who's older but their technique is horrible and you have no idea how they're getting around this quad and they're landing it but you just know it's a horrible technique 
Would you be more concerned for their safety and their health than a young kid <laughs> with like perfect technique? <laughs> yes, one hundred thousand percent. Yeah. Do surgery with a hammer, otherwise. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh. yeah. Well said. It's just like uh, it, like you know, a wake of destruction. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I felt like some of my jumps were like that. You know, being a pair skater, being a little bigger. If I was off, I. You know, look like a tornado. <laughs> We've all, I mean, yeah, you're a big guy. You're like, you're a similar height to me. So, yeah, you can certainly, when you're this, like a tall skater, you either look amazing doing it, you're a little bit off, you look awful, right? And people are right. like, oh my God, right. look at him. <laughs> yeah. Um, got another question. It's like every every more inch of height, there's like another potential variation of weird yeah. weird alignment to happen. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. We've got another question here. If competitions mm -hmm. resume next season, will expectations by judges be lower since most everyone will have had the same drastic interruption in training all oh, right with this uh that's a good i mean that's yeah. a good question i think i think that judges should be judging it based on you know a standard yeah. mm -hmm. regardless mm -hmm. i think the skating it's more the skating world's interpretation of under of understanding i think the judges have to be as impartial as possible mm -hmm. you know i think they are human. There is going to be that slight adjustment because everyone is aware. Yeah. But I think at the same time, that just makes the competition in that category. You yeah. Know, a, a competition of people like figuring it out again. Yeah. Um, dealing with nerves for the first time and after a while and getting back into getting back into it after all that build up. I think it's more going to be the skating community that has to adjust to that than the judges. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I think the judges can... Uh, be a little more lenient with people, you know, if they turn up with their programs like, mm, yeah, you know, well, I expected more of an improvement. I think that wouldn't be very yeah. fair, all things considered, <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, well, hopefully, the system, hopefully the system for the judges helps them not have to do that, right? Like, if, if yeah. they're following it. But they can yeah. be a bit unfair, though. I remember I, like, sprained my ankle and I didn't train for three months and I went, I had, like, two or three weeks to get ready for a competition. I went there. And the judges were like, oh, well, we didn't see as much improvement as we were hoping. And I thought, well, of course you didn't. I haven't skated for three months. I've been yeah. injured. I'm happy I'm here. Yeah. But you, you know what they're like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's a... It's... Go on. It's, it's, like, it's like the thing that makes skating skating. It's one of the hugest things about our sport that makes it so interesting to talk about. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's this, like, perfect idea of what we want it to look like, mm -hmm. you know, in a perfect world. But then there's the reality of the fact that they're human beings from different cultures and different countries with different biases that they can't eliminate completely. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it makes this more colorful. Yeah. yeah. Frustrating and aggravating, but also makes you want to watch it more. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's exactly. true. Well, I think that's well put. Yeah. Well said. Well yeah. said. Um, he is one. What's an ideal ratio of on ice to off ice work? Does the ratio change depending on how advanced of a skater you are? That's a, I mean, that's a good question. That's a hard generalization to make because different people need different things. A lot of, some of it's body type, some of it's where your strengths and weaknesses lie. I, for myself, fitness was, uh, for a lot of my career, the majority of my focus. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, with my elbows for lifts, I can't straighten my elbows, so I did, I was always getting like shit from, excuse my language, from the, <laughs> from the, from the tech panel, you know, with, no with uh, if my arm looked like But your like arm, a bent, when you're locked out, it's like here, right? It Gen doesn't, it, genetics, it, it, right? My, my biomechanics will not allow me to lock out and, re, and like hold relax there. Oh. So I had to be really ready for competitions or else my I'd lose a lift. That's which a is bit, our highest, bit unfair, our highest oh, that, right? It's, it's I like... think I think the rule is is worded incorrectly. Yeah. You know, a dance lift is considered a dance lift when it doesn't pass the guy's head, right? Yeah. yeah. I think a pair lift should be once it has passed the guy's head. And yes. if you work around in here and let's say the lift bobbles up and down a couple times, get the judges to take some quality marks off. But have the have That's... the judges tried holding someone over their head with their arm bent? Yeah. <laughs> that is a lot harder than just straightening in your arm. So if you're like it here, is harder, you've got yeah. so much more force going through right. your arm. But in a <laughs> in a complex sport that's like art and sport you have to like create a grid somehow that has to be followed right and so i've I, i'm an outlier i fall out of that grid i guess yeah but i i just think if they went from the head up and let the te the the judges deal with the quality if it's moving around up there 
it's still a lift. Just take some quality marks off. That makes the most sense yeah. to me. Um, but back to the question about uh, off ice to on ice. Mm. Um, I've seen, you know, I've trained with Yuzu. I've trained with Havi. I've trained with all sorts of different skaters who have different needs. I think um, where you're at in your season is a huge component. Mm -hmm. You know, like earlier in the season, I would really heavily load the fitness. I'd put on some extra muscle because I knew as I moved into the season, I'd focus a bit more on cardio and I'd yeah. lean out. So I wanted to have someone to go somewhere to go from or else yeah. I'd get too yeah. small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So for me, it was, I really liked taking the fitness as a science aspect of the sport and mm -hmm. felt like I could measure what I was doing. Yeah. And then the skating part was like, the cherry on top, the finesse, the like yeah. demonstration of all my hard work. Mm -hmm. And then as I got older, it became more about maintenance off the ice yeah. with a couple months of like really pushing it hard. And the rest was like upkeep and injury prevention because, you know, you get old and your body starts yelling yeah. at you all a lot of, Yeah, so it's a lot of small rotator cuff exercise if you as yeah. a pair skater, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, the same way you see tennis players like Federer and Nadal yeah. and Djokovic, like maintaining their level is they figured out the output that they actually need, not overtraining, yeah. and just figuring out what it is they need to do to support their game. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think your ratio is gonna depend on listening to your body, having a good team around you that yeah. you trust, and and finding where you maximize your uh, potential. Yeah. Well said, well said. Couldn't agree more, Dan. Mm -hmm. Here's a wait, let's see, here we go. I do see more ladies attempting quads nowadays. Do you think it will end up like the men category in the future where, co where quads is kind of like a must to get onto the podium? I think it already almost is, right? I think it's, yeah, it's, it's just about there, isn't it? Yeah, mm. there was no progression. There was no dimmer switch. It was just like a light switch. It was like, here you go. <laughs> Bam. We're, we're the same as you guys now. Yeah, you don't need a quad. Now you're going to need three. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's... Uh, <coughs> I mean, it doesn't have the same like depth with the quads. Yes. You're not seeing yeah. the same number of skaters doing them yet. Yes. But the men kind of looked like that for a little while, up and down. Yeah. yeah. And then it it as a movement kind of expanded because the young skaters watching the guys doing the quads all started them younger, mm -hmm. and so they like all got a grasp on it. But with the girls, these girls kind of changed the way things are done. Yeah. And everyone else was like kind of casually working on them, maybe you know. Mm -hmm. And now it's like a scramble, like, oh, we need we need to, to start working on an axle or a quad if we want to be competitive in the next couple of years because, yeah, you know, there's what there's going to be five, five girls doing quads. That's yeah. four. That's really um, so. that's really difficult for anyone who is, let's say, in their 20s. And they up until this point when they were, I suppose, maybe at their athletic peak, a little younger for single skating. I think it happens later if you're a dance or pairs skater, you know, mm. but the single skating, you know, happens a bit younger and suddenly now you're having to do things that you've never been able to do. You're 24 years old and if you can't do yeah. it, you, you can't get up. I mean, that's, that's tough you know, yeah. to learn, I think, it right? It is really tough. Sports, sports is tough and it, I think there those shifts, those like... Uh, revolutions, pun intended, <laughs> those, uh, th that, that like movement forward in a sport, it kind of, it's, it draws a line, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people either are able to, to move with it mm -hmm. or they stay great from the last chunk Yeah, and yeah. they get stuck. Yeah. And yeah. I think it, it sucks and it's hard, but it's like growing pains, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and I think the sport's moving and our sport is always changing because of the the various viewpoint points on what makes a yeah. good skater and mm -hmm. what are the most important aspects of figure skating, who should be winning based on what they're showing us. And there will always be arguments, mm -hmm. except for the people that manage to just pull it all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get like guys like, you know, uh, Yuzu has yeah. been Yuzu. able to just kind of like stay in there yeah. with both sides quality just pushing the envelope yes yeah. and i think those are the people you're gonna see who are the, like the classic skaters the ones that no matter what camp is arguing they'll always be at the top at of the that top. conversation yeah mm -hmm. of course yeah. yeah i mean yeah well said mm -hmm. <laughs> um i'm gonna go on to the next question ari jumps and bigger people landing harder do you think skaters who are taller and therefore heavier are more or less risk than those 
who are just, just heavier, heavier but, but still, still healthy, healthy for their, for their height. height. I don't have my glasses on. That was hard to read. Did you get that, Dylan? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like if the weight's about the same, but someone taller versus someone a little more compact. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's as simple as putting them into a black and white group like that. I think some, I mean, Evan Lysacek was super tall yeah. he was, and yeah. he was lanky, but he was like always in control of his body, yeah. mm. you know? And then on the flip side, you can see someone who's a, got a lower uh, center of gravity, maybe a little more muscular and mm-hmm. they can be all over the place. And then vice versa too. Yeah. I would say, generally speaking, the longer you are, the higher your center of gravity, Generally, it's more of a difficult thing to manage mm-hmm. in terms of if you're off at all, you've got to fight twice as hard to get back on. Yeah. Um, Agreed. But then again, if you're carrying more weight, you know, uh, jumps at the end of your program are going to be, your conditioning is going to be super important. And uh, hopefully your technique is very sound. But he is Otherwise, one. you're going to run out of steam. He is one, Dylan. The heavier you got from doing lifts, how does that affect your jumps? Mm. Yeah, it, it took me it took me a little bit. Like when I... Um, when I first started pairs, I did both singles and pairs. And I, yeah. from the time I stopped singles till I like kind of settled with my paired weight was about 30 pounds of muscle I put on. Wow. So my jumps changed a ton. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do have that tendency to muscle a little bit. So yeah. with that added muscle and like diameter, I felt like at times like all over the place and I just could not, I'd land somehow, yeah. but it would be <laughs> With miraculous. <show> clean. <laughs> the, strength, the strength would enable me to like save it, but it wasn't exactly finessed. Did you ever and get it on took the, me a bit to get used to that. Did you ever get on the ice when you were kind of like jacked and you were like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to rotate around this triple toe today. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Especially if it was like the day after a big workout yeah. and you just feel like, full your muscles feel like swollen and yeah. heavy and it's like pump, ah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know like i feel like i, I feel like i look great but jumping's not gonna be a good yeah, thing but when, skate by like you know 120 pound yuzu and when you get to that beach uh, when you get to that beach dylan though you look great so, you know? yeah well now that i'm retired you know, skating, what beach do you get to go to exactly. i think a lot of people don't realize like that you have to find that balance you know especially for the jumpers yeah ice dancers we can get away with it a bit but um yeah, with the with you single skaters and pair skaters, especially finding that right yeah. like weight and. I will body say weight. though, mm. the heavier I got, the harder it was to get to a program. Like when I yes, put, yeah. like, yes, for so sure. like when I was competing, I don't know, I was like 20, 25 pounds lighter than I am now. I went to the gym a lot afterwards, and if I had to get through a long program now, forget it, I, I'd be dead. I I feel like I'd have to strip all my. <laughs> Like like my muscle probably up and just get yeah. right even back if down. you were the same weight as before, even if you were the same weight as before and hadn't done in a while, you'd still die. Yeah. Like yeah. that that yeah. that long program exertion is very specific. You would be yeah. okay you know? though. You just wouldn't be able to do a lunge at the end into your lift. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to just do a lift like everyone else. Uh, I don't know. I do. I will say that like having competed till into like. I was 33 when I retired. So okay. it's like a pretty, pretty long time. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like one of the first ever figure skaters, I think. At that <laughs> age, you know? um, I think you, you get smarter, oh, you know, you get yeah. a little bit better at learning when to like, just take your foot off the gas yeah. and ride downhill a little Crafty and veteran. how to like, you know, use those moments to not take away from the program, yeah. but like to rebuild for like a big hit as opposed to just like, floor it yeah. for four and a half minutes exactly. and i'm young and i'm in shape yeah. you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah completely get that a mm-hmm. uh, couple more questions then before uh, we go so let's have a quick look through someone says that hello from kwsc looking good dylan from sk8g <laughs> Uh, Deborah, oh. her name's Deborah no, Bennett. Sca- oh, Deborah Bennett. Sorry, yeah, I was Deborah looking Bennett at the user. Says hello. Hi, Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kitchener Water. I skated in Waterloo for seven years. Oh, um, that's nice. right. With, with Kirsten, with my sister Kira, and then yeah. with Kirsten. Oh, nice. Oh, very good. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is. Uh, I wish jumps were not counted if they end with a fall. Only do quads if you can land them. Men singles became a fall fest. Oof. Uh, harsh judging on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and here's here's back to what we were saying about uh, opinions on what you want to see. You know, some people want to see that risk factor, and if the falls happen, 
it just shows how hard it is to do it all yeah. the time. Yeah. Some people want to watch beautiful skating. You make calculated risks. You yeah. know, if you're if you're not gonna do it that day or you don't feel like you can, don't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That being said, skating is like my sister did um, a psychology degree, and one of her classes was sports psychology, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was a skater, of course, and mm -hmm. but her professor used figure skating as an example in the in the class about how our sport, and I think mostly singles because there's the most risk elements. Mm -hmm. um, the ratio of um, the ratio of success in practice to competition is one of the lowest out of any sport, and I think it's a testament to how difficult it is to compete a clean program yeah. yes. with like you can be so ready yeah. and you can go out there and you can mail it in and just knock off your elements but in my opinion that's not that's not a full clean program yeah mm -hmm. you know like when you go out and you want to deliver the best you've got to be able to do that like you get a couple a few in your career where you really have this out of body like perfect moment yeah, yeah. if you're lucky you have those yeah. and i think to under to really understand the physics of what's happening in a quad and how easily something can go wrong you could land on a piece of ice you could take off in a hole and the ice like explodes you know where yeah. it's just like a weak spot in the ice and it just explodes and you go up into the air and you could have set it up perfectly yeah. and now all of a sudden you're missing like a third of your height and you're scrambling uh, in the air trying to rotate in like a you know half a second yeah yeah the the odds we see people do it over and over and over, and I think we take for granted just what's happening. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling off, you lose your focus for a split second, and you're not like dialed in. That jump's done. It's, yeah, over. Yeah. it's over. And now you have to rebuild, let it go, get yourself back into the mindset yeah. within seconds to do another hard thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is an extremely demanding mental and emotional and you know physical task yeah. to be able yes. to do those things when you're trying to emote and tell a story yeah. so yeah. my opinion don't be so harsh about it <laughs> that being said if there are a lot of competitions with a lot of people falling yeah you know like if you know it's early in the season you're not ready dumb down your program a bit yeah, yeah. that makes sense you know sense. like get, get a good skate out absolutely yeah, yeah. then yeah. it gives the ones a chance that uh who don't do the quad then with a nice clean skate to kind of slip in and uh, take <laughs> a medal though of yeah. course doesn't it <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. We'll do a, a few more questions because uh, we're on a time crunch here. Um, let's see where we at. When you get back on the ice, which ice skating move are uh, each of you most excited to do? Oh. Um, fall <laughs> on my face. No, I can't be kidding. I'm trying to avoid oh, that yeah, one. Classic. Everyone's favorite. Yeah, classic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dylan, what do you want to do when you get on the ice? <laughs> I don't skate anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to do Sailor Moon on Ice in Japan this year. Oh, I never wow. thought I'd do a show in, in drag. Kind of, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. No, no, not in drag. I was yeah. supposed to be one of the guardians, but oh. I had to get fitted for this like big long wig. Oh, dear. Then I'd pay. I'd pay money to see if you're in drag doing well, that. Well, schedule for next year. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll watch my that. drag. My drag name will be Delilah. Yeah. yeah okay. Perfect. Delilah. Yeah. We'll be tuning in for that one. That's what do you want to do, Stasia? Um, <laughs> um, if I had to pick an element, I'd do a death spiral. I think. If I had to pick a one. death spiral. Okay. okay. Nice. Yeah. Why not? They're fun. Yeah. Fun enough. Yeah, I've always wanted to learn a death spiral. Us dancers, like, um, I don't know, I'm, I've never learned one. I, I've learned some pair elements, but never death death spiral. I think I'm too long for one. No, you'd <laughs> be okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You could manage it. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe something I could, we could work on in yeah, the future. Yeah, you need old Hercules style over there to yeah. do it, do it, you know? Like. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I would be excited to just, um, I don't know, do one of our dance lifts, really. Or even just yeah. like a little a little platter, like, uh, yeah, I miss doing mm. lifts. The reality is we'll probably trip over our toe the second oh, we yeah. get on the ice, because we've been skating in, those, um, <laughs> skating in those roller skates is a little bit different. But that's yeah. the reality of what we do. Yeah, yeah. Someone <laughs> asked me recently, Dylan, would I do a bounce spin if I was on the re receiving end of the bounce spin, as opposed <laughs> to just swinging out of stage around? And I said, yeah, if a tank was going to do it with me so if i ever find myself on the ice with you dylan i will let oh you bounce God. spin me that's how about that's, that you know that's it's very kind and I <laughs> trust in me however i will let you know the physics are backward because you're taller than me i don't know it wouldn't be much of a bounce it would be just like a 
like a grass cutter. I, yeah. call it. <laughs> I can so play hedge trim. I'll grow like a nice big yeah, bushy yeah, yeah. beard, you yeah. know, and a the little bit of padding yeah. to my chin. I'll be fine. Yeah, you know? yeah oh, some, some of your hair comes hey, off too because to it's, you know, oh, there we go. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't trust Stage to oh, know, swing me into God. one of those. With Dylan. He seems very unconfident, but yeah, I'd give it a go. I don't know. I think, I think she'd be pretty good with a crane. You think, she could with, probably with handle a crane, a crane control. Sure. She's pretty strong. She doesn't, you know, yeah, she's pretty strong. She has guns. Look at that. Yeah. Her yeah, arms, you, like your thighs. Those are, those are dangerous. <laughs> oh my no, WMDs there. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just going on to just one or two more. Um, people are saying they pay a lot of money to see that, by the way, Dylan. Yes. So we might, we might have a viral video yeah. on the go there. You no, know, like people, All right. people will pay for that. We'll, start, we'll open a PayPal account. Uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Do pair and ice dance skaters usually end up dating with their skating partner? Well, you know, I'm a little bit biased on this one because uh, I'm here with my girlfriend and yeah. partner, of course. But Dylan, <laughs> what do you have to say about that? <laughs> uh, I've never dated a partner. I, I mean, my first partner was my sister, so, okay, so, so maybe, obvious maybe there. Not right, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I've ne yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's, it, it, I think it's, it, it sometimes. It's like saying, would you open a business answer. up with your wife, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're connecting on such a deep level and you develop such a, a level of trust and a mm -hmm. bond that you don't really find in many aspects of life. So if you have some sort of chemistry, you're going to know right away yes. or you're going to feel it, whether you ignore it or not, yes. you know? So I think, but I think it, it's much more complicated than that. I think you have to know that you can do both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're putting in jeopardy your career. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, you know, partnerships oh, we've kind all, of fall apart. We've all seen it, yeah. Seen the older uh, wedding ring flying across the ice and things like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe seen not every... that. Yeah. But... Oh, oh my yeah. God. A set of keys but... in the middle of the ice. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. no, I, it, it's true. I, like, you um... know what, I, I would imagine it's a great experience to share with someone that you, you know, you yeah. have those kind of feelings for. Yeah. I never have, so yeah. I can't really comment. I'm more surprised by the couples than you hear of the partnership where they don't speak to each other at all. One mm. gets on one side of the ice, the other gets on the other side of the ice. No words. They go to the coach. The beautiful, incredible, long program. No words spoken. They just leave. They separate. <laughs> yeah. There they go. You know, well, I mean, world that can, also, that can also happen with like non-dating partnerships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. True. Yeah. Exactly. Partnerships are very complicated. Yeah, very, very complicated. They Compli can be. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. and we've we've definitely seen it all, haven't we? And like, and I I never dated any of my competitive partners, but I mean, I've seen plenty. We we all have. We all, you know, yeah. in the show world and competitive world, and it's it's normal and it's you know it's it just it happens. It can happen sometimes. And, yeah. yeah, true. Mm. Well, anyway, we have to start wrapping up because I know mm. Dylan is a busy man. And, you know, Dylan, I'm going to just flash, flash up a picture of your um, your actual show that you do on YouTube. Can you explain yes. us a bit about this? There's a picture of you and Asha on the screen right yeah. now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's called That Figure Skating Show on CBC um, YouTube, CBC Sports YouTube channel. And so uh, essentially what happened was both Asher and I have done some work for CBC commentary and um, I did uh, Worlds the year before um, for the broadcast with uh, with Kurt Browning. And uh, going into last season, the ISU and CBC's uh, broadcasting contract expired and the negotiations, I guess, weren't going well. And so we didn't have a broadcast feed for the Grand Prix season. Mm -hmm. And so CBC kind of put their heads together and... Uh, you know, with the world becoming more digital, they decided to give something a shot. Uh, and so Asher and I got to try this pilot show, um, recapping the Grand Prix of the week and, nice. we, you know, make it fun. And it just kind of evolved as we went. It's very off the cuff and we have mm -hmm. a blast doing it. I've known Asher for years yeah. and uh, CBC has been very happy with it. So, um, you know, fingers crossed that everything gets back to it's normal. A, and It's a really good show. I mean, we've, we've watched oh, thank it. You. Yeah, we watched guys, it a little bit, yeah. It's so genuine. It's so funny. And um, I think a lot of people really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but if you're going, if you. anyone is watching this and you want to watch a show recapping, um, you know, major events, major competitions, 
make sure it's that one because it has our seal of approval and I will send everybody in that direction when they want to watch Thank something like that. All right. Much appreciated. So I have to say thanks for joining us today, Dylan. It's been great having you on. You brought a lot of good insight with us. You can follow me on Instagram, Ice Coach Online, Stasia Olson and Dylan Moscovich. I've got, just so you know, Dylan, I do have all the links on the screen below, yeah. so I'm not just throwing <laughs> words you. out there, okay? <laughs> all right, so any closing comments? Uh, thanks yeah. so much for having me. It's <laughs> it's uh, it's great to see you guys. And, uh, so you know, I know the fans and everyone in skating is like really eager to get back at it. And I think that's great. So, uh, you know, really hoping that the world keeps healing and uh, everything gets back to normal and people can start enjoying figure skating again. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks for, cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Dylan. I'm going to end the stream now. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Dylan. And next time, for everyone watching, I won't mess up the sound at the beginning of the video, <laughs> probably, but no promises. We like to make mistakes here because everybody makes mistakes. So <laughs> thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, Dylan. We'll see you next time. Thanks, see guys. You guys. <laughs>